Hi everyone, this is going to be the last video on this uh, series on how to use Python and Abacus together to model uh, iBeam with a stiffener in the middle and everything that we've done. I should be able to make other episodes in the future about either different structures or different objectives, but still using Python and Abacus together. So the way this stands now, we already done a little bit of post-processing. There's more to cover, but we're happy like this. And we tested our model to know it runs. So now the last step is how can you build a file that runs as many models as you want, so then you can get to this last amazing step, which is to go and watch TV while Python and Abacus do all the work for you. So this is very simple to do once you have everything that we've done until now. So let's go into the Notepad++ and remember that we split this into a post-processing function and a create beam model function. So basically what we're going to do now is make sure this acts in the right place. So one of the things I'm going to first do is to say that my function create beam model will have certain variables that will help me create the model. And obviously these are the variables that we know. It's the, the width, the, the, the height and all that type of stuff. So I'm going to put this for now inside the function. And I'm going to use the tab again to put it inside. But now if I run it like this, all the models will have these uh, numbers. Okay. So what I'm going to do is copy this down here as well. And inside this function, create B model, I'm going to call a list, let's say called parameters. Okay. Could be called whatever you want. And now what I'm going to do is I want parameters to be equal to a list. And I'm going to go into this and put all the numbers in the parameter. So I'm going to put 180, then 200, then 190, then 8, then 9, then 10, and then 9,000. Stiffener thickness is 11. I guess this can be a parameter. And then I'm going to say the yield strength is going to be 355. But I'm not going to make this a parameter. I'm going to keep this inside the function. So this one I'm not going to do. The mesh size of 100, I guess we can keep as a parameter. And the load of 5,000 as well. So now that I've done all of this, I don't need this any anymore. And this list is going to go inside the function when I call it. So now, imagine these parameters going and transforming into this variable list called variable. So now what I'm going to do is to say that my top flange width is going to be the first value inside the variables, while the bottom flange is the second, the web height is the third, and so on and so on. Now we know this, the stiffener thickness is still a variable, but now the yield strength, I'm going to keep it constant as 355. So I'm just going to send it down here. And this will be 355 for all the models. And it's my decision to say, do I want this to be a parameter that, that I can change? Or am I going to keep this constant? And in this case, I'm going to choose it to be constant. So now my 8 is going to be the mesh size, so or my 9th, and then my 10th is going to be the load. Now, it's going to be important that I remember this order. So I'm just going to paste this down here as well just so I always remember this order. So I can put it like here. And I guess to make this a comment, you can put three quotation marks and three quotation marks. And this all is going to be a comment now. Okay, so this is going to just skip. So now I know the order. So I know that 180 is going to be that. And this is just for me to remember uh, what the order is. So now that I define the parameters in this list, I just need to make sure that this model is going to have its own folder when it runs. So now the folders are created automatically and then the next one will be 13. But then inside that folder, I want to create another folder. So I know how to do that. I know that we are now in this directory called base deer folder name. So now what I'm going to do is to say, uh, this is the model height. I almost missed this one. So let's change, push this inside as well. You don't have to change this because the variable names are still the same. Uh, so now what I need to do is to create a folder before I start creating the model. So I have definitely a script somewhere that I can find. 
So I found a script that should be able to help me, and let's see how how this works. I'm going to run it, write it here. So I'm going to say that this is the parameters I want, and now I'm going to create a folder with this parameter. So let me just edit this a little bit, and I'll show you how it's going to look at the end. Okay, so I've done a little bit of work, and I'll explain to you what this does. So the first thing I'm going to say is I want a variable called model name to be empty. And then for each number in the parameters, add that to the model name with a uh, underscore in the middle. So actually the right thing is to say that I want the model name to be a, a string with the first value in parameters. So that's good. And now I want from J to parameters and I need to go from one to the end. I hope this makes sense. This is a little bit complicated, I admit that, but I hope this makes sense in general. And if you, this doesn't, use simpler code that is a little bit less uh, powerful. And slowly and steady, you're going to build up to a more complicated one. But basically what this does is the model name is going to be the 180, so the first value. And then for each one, I'm going to add an underscore and then the string for the next value. So at the end, once I print here the name folder, I should get the directory that I had since the beginning. So let me confirm that this is correct. That is not correct. So I'm gonna, this is my base directory. So let me go all the way down and I'm gonna change this with this. So that's where my folder should be and then bar and then model name. And then I'm gonna print it just to make sure it's all correct. Then I make the folder. I change the folder to that one. So then when I run the model, it will stay there. So this will create a beam model with these parameters, and then hopefully the post-processing will do its job. So I'm just gonna save for now and let's run and see how this, this works. Before that, I'm just gonna comment all this stuff. So I'm gonna comment these two prints because that's not necessary. So now it's saved, let's run. And now we wait. Okay, so we got an error and the error says is in line 242 which makes sense because it's saying that the ODB is no longer in the folder that I sh that it should be, right? That it was before. So let's first see what happened here. So if I go to test Python and if I go here to 13, you can see now here the folder with the name of the parameters that I have. So this is all fantastic. And now obviously the ODB is not in the right folder anymore. That's a fair criticism. So this ODB, instead of being in this folder, I'm going to change it to the current folder where we are. So is there a, a variable for the current folder? I don't think so, but we can do that. So, so I forgot how to do this in Python. So let's go and I can show you how I learned Python throughout all these years. So if you go here and you type Python, how to get current directory. So how to find the folder where you're working at the moment. And you read a little bit and it is I need something with an OS. So here we go, path OS get current directory. So that's the one I want. So what I'm gonna do is to say that my current directory, I'm gonna put a, a folder name here. So let's call it current directory equals this. And then I know my ODB will be in the current directory. So I'm gonna do str so let's try like this without the str first and then if it doesn't work it doesn't work plus and then bar job one odb so this should work uh, and then basically this code here because it's inside the function it will be after th i change the directory so this should work let's try so i saved let's run it again and see how this works okay so this has finished running let's have a look and now we're gonna go into number 14. And once you open this, here is the displacement curve that we, we had from before. There you go. So let's say you want to create now 10,000 modules. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna do maybe 10 or, or something, but you'll see. So one of the things we can do is we have this parameter um, list, so we can make a list of parameter lists. So let's say we say models equals empty, and then I can say models dot append, and I'm gonna put this list, all of this, inside 
a list called models, okay? And now I could, for example, say, okay, if I remember the order, right? Let's say, copy paste this a couple of times. Let's say I want to study a beam with nine meters, with eight, with seven, with six, with five, and with four meters, right? Everything stays the same, but I could change more stuff. And now what's gonna happen is I have a models uh, list that has six different models with different parameters inside. So now what I need to do is this part that used to be uh, only run once, I need to put it inside a for loop. So if I do for i in models, okay, my model name is str, and now instead of parameters, I'm gonna do i zero. So i in models, it will choose that, and then i zero, it will choose the 180. Okay, and then so on and so on. So basically, the only thing I need to do is change parameters for i. And i here as well. Okay? I don't know if this made sense, but uh, let's run it. So this will take definitely 20 minutes or so. So definitely I'm going to pause and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so now we got to the end of this run. As you can see... Abacus kept telling me that it ran the 9,000, and the 8,000, and the 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, and 4,000. So exactly as I asked, uh, exactly as I set it up here. So now if we go to the run number uh, 16, which is the last one, here are the, the six folders that we run, and here is the curve that we wanted to obtain from Abacus. Now, finally, uh, Let's say you want to do 10,000 models, right? You're not going to copy this 10,000 times. So the way you do it, and I'll show you an example where I did it. Let's get it from here. So I'm just going to show you this from another model, and then this adapts is the same thing. So I start with an empty list called models, and let's say I want the... What was the first thing? I want the top flange width to go, let's say, from 100 to 500, let's say. So there is a function for that, which I forgot the name. So I'm going to copy this from this other file. So if you write it like this, obviously we need NP. So go back into the imports and we do import numpy as np. So numpy is the numbers library for Python. It's probably one of the most famous uh, libraries. So if I say for top flange width in np range, and let's say I want from 100 to 5125, what this will do, and maybe I can print it here for you so you can see. So I'm going to print top flange width. What this will do is going to print 100, and then 125, and then 150, 175, until it gets to 500, okay? So if you create, let's say, all sorts of this, we call this a nested for loop. So this is from a previous uh, code, but imagine the same, right? So a, a nested for loop, this will end up with very easily and very fast to 10,000 modules, 100,000 models, depending on um, numbers you put inside here. So it's that simple. And once you have this list in models, this code stays exactly the same. You don't need to change it. It's just that instead of having this six, you're going to have these nested for loops uh, creating lots and lots of models. Okay, I hope this made sense. I'm going to delete this because I can show you this in another example and I don't want to confuse you too much for now. Uh, but I hope that potential at least uh, made some sense. So I think we're finally done with this so we have built the master file that runs as many models as we want which then means we can keep the computer doing all the runs for us and doing all the post-processing while we're doing the best thing that we can do in our lives which could be watch tv but you know could be having fun with friends or spending time with family whatever you want to do so i hope this uh, was a nice set of videos uh, let me know what else you would like me to to target, watch the introduction video again if you're interested in, in my research and stuff that I will do next. Um, but for now, uh, I think this is good enough. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.